Now, joining me now from London is Peter Popham. He's author of The Lady and the Peacock, The Life of Aung San Suu Kyi. He has toured Myanmar as an undercover journalist several times since 1991, and he joins us now. So thank you for joining us here in the program. Um, of course, you're aware of the contents of the UN report, and it is very critical of Aung San Suu Kyi for not using her position or her moral authority to stem or prevent what happened to the Rohingya in Rakhine State. Why? is it that she has failed to take any meaningful action? Uh, that's the question which millions of people have been asking, millions of people who have been strong supporters of Aung San Suu Kyi during her many years of house arrest. Um, and she hasn't directly answered it. I mean, she's offered various um, thoughts about uh, the terrible things happening in Rakhine State. She accused the media of gross exaggeration, of, of fake news. Um, but she has done nothing to distance herself publicly from the actions from the actions of the of the um, of the army. Yeah, in the UN report, it's a scathing report. It accuses you know top generals of Myanmar of genocide. You know, could this UN report help Aung San Suu Kyi to at least understand that? Look, if she wants to exercise her power here in a meaningful way, she must support the recommendations of this UN report. She must support these war crimes prosecutions. Well, it would be terrific if that happened, but on the, on the recent performance, it's highly unlikely. And one of the characteristics of Suu Kyi, which has been evident from uh, 20 years ago more, is that once she's settled on a, on a position, she sticks with it. I mean, this has been a, a great virtue during the years when she was fighting for democracy, but now it's a problem because she seems to be unable to open her mind to a different account of what happened in Rakhine State to the one which she has decided to believe in. So what motivates Aung San Suu Kyi? Is it about power and keeping her power? That's, again, that's an excellent question, and it's hard to know clearly. I mean, she's always felt that it was her duty to fulfill the, 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 the legacy, to, 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 to further the legacy of her father, who was the founding uh, general of the Burmese army and the founder of modern Burma. Um, and this seems to lead her into the directions of a certain amount of megalomania, it has to be said. She's been hell-bent on becoming president for six or seven years, maybe longer than that. Um, and once she be become president, um, the idea that she would do what everyone was hoping and become a great liberalizing force, changing the constitution, reducing yeah. the power of the armed forces. None of this has happened at all. So, as I say, it's a, it's a disappointment not only about Rakhine State, where it's much more than a disappointment, but in many other areas of the life of Burma, she has not lived up to expectations at all. Yeah, and it, it, I was going to ask you about that. Is this a disappointment because the world was projecting too much upon her. You know, she is this Nobel Peace Prize winner. She is this pro-democracy icon, a human rights icon. There is this, you know, mythology surrounding Aung San Suu Kyi. I mean, do you think that the world has placed too much hope and expectation on her? I, I think that, I mean, I, I feel that she was rightly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize because she did um, far more than any, any other single person. She, she led the fight against the army's power, the dictatorial power of the regime, um, and she created the, the National League for Democracy, which is still the biggest party in the country. I think the problem is that we overstated um, her potential as a politician. Um, mm. She'd done almost nothing in politics beside um, campaigning against the regime in 1989. 1990, when she was finally put under house arrest after mere seven or eight months of political activity. She had no political activity in her life before then. And I think that we, in that great vacuum that uh, extended for more than 10 years when she was locked up, we we decided that she must have great potential as a politician. And sadly, that has not proved to be the case.